What is Oliveira anyways? Just some washed up fucking former champion. All right. Here we go. We're on site Delta. Clem in the bottom right. Dark in the top left. So, yeah, I guess we just kind of wait a minute and see what Clem wants to do for his opener. Does he throw the barracks down? Is he going command center first? We don't really know. Why is every single map a two-player map? Uh, well, they only allow two-player maps in, uh, in, in StarCraft 2. Uh, only GSL ever puts out four-player maps. Uh, people don't like the randomness of not being able to scout their opponent exactly when they want to. Too many perceived imbalances that occur. Um, yeah, part of it has to do with the large amount of workers. Two-player base is inherently worse for Zerg because of less bases? No. No. The, the, the expansion amount is controlled, right? So, like, I mean, if you get an absolutely gigantic map, maybe, uh, there's there's some worlds in which, like, Zerg and Protoss start to get ahead because of that. Definitely the four-player maps Terrans have struggled on in GSL, but they aren't played that much. And the game has really evolved, and the patches have evolved, uh, considering two-player maps, not four-player maps. Wait, wait, I watch Artie all the time, but this is the first time I've ever just straight up thought that was very rude and unprofessional. What did I say that was very rude and unprofessional? I need to know. I need to know so I can say it again and double down upon it. What is it? Let me know. Oh, because I, I shit talked the MMA fighter with a guy that Makachev destroyed. Okay, sick. No, I'm sure he's very good. I only just started watching MMA. <laughs> this sweater is an $85 sweater. You leave me be. <clears throat> so. What do we have for builds here? Let's take a look. Fast third command. Reactor Hellion. Probably Banshee. We'll see that in a moment. Okay, nothing, nothing wild here for Clem. Dark with three base. Reasonably quick. Yeah, nothing, nothing really uh, to comment on too heavily. Let's see if he wants to throw down a Roach Horn or not. You got speed this game, so a little bit less likely, I'd say. are being incredibly mean about my sweater. It's a very handsome sweater. You must stop now. Did your wives tell you that this that you looked handsome in your sweater? Probably not, right? Get out of here. <laughs> All right. Uh, a little bit of pressure coming out from uh from Clem here. We have cloak banshees coming up. You know, all things that we kind of expect. Uh, the big difference this game is it's not going to be a roach-based game. 
Uh, very unlikely that we'll see any sort of Roach tech this game. It looks like it's probably going to be Ling Bane. Uh, we'll know for sure when the uh, macro hatchery goes down in the main base. Um, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna actually play Ling Bane, you do need to get a macro hatchery hatchery relatively early in your main to have enough larva to actually fuel it. Double Evo being made. There is the possibility here that he gets range attack and goes Ling Bane Hydra. Uh, Dark doesn't do that very often, so I'm not thinking that'll be it. Oh, melee. Yeah. Okay, so it will be... Uh, well, I mean, it still could be Ling Bane Hydra, but I don't think it will be. Like, you can do that with melee attack and not ranged. Wow, a lot of pressure on this hatch. Nice grenade. Very nice grenade. Dude, he's going to get it. That was very well done. And, you know, he has the double... Uh, okay, there it is. There's the, the care pace. Because he had the double Evo that whole time. It felt like it might have been that sometimes people accidentally put both upgrades on one Evo when they're clicking quickly. And there is the Hydralis den. Yeah, so he did make the uh, macro hatch regardless, which you do need when you're going heavy Ling Bane regardless. Uh, but yeah, going into Ling Bane Hydra. That's going to be kind of fun. Uh, it's, it's just, it's not something I see very often from him. Now, mines are being made. Second uh, factory and an armory. We'll see if he gets... Plus one vehicle weapons or plating? Excuse me. Uh, the plating points towards consistent mine production. The the plus one uh, vehicle weapons points towards a switch into siege tanks. Now, against Lingbane Hydra, you actually want siege tank normally. You can play marine marauder mine, but you can't play marine mine. Marine mine just doesn't quite cut it. I think even with the, the nerfs of the Banelings, it probably wouldn't cut it. That would be a wild thing. Okay, so he's getting Drilling Claws. So it's going to be Mines, but he's going to need to add in Marauders. Now, that's theory that he needs to add in Marauders. I've never seen just Marine Mine Medivac work against Lingbane Hydra. That's not to say that it cannot. Honestly, for a long time, when Lingbane Hydra first started getting played, uh, the... Like, only Maru could play non-tank style against it. Everyone else needed to go tanks against it. But Maru did show. I remember this specific game against Sue where he showed that you could actually go Marauders with your Marines and Mines and actually take it out. Uh, it was a really, really fantastic game out of Maru. And nowadays, we'll see people do that more often. But as you can see right there, like, you just saw a big part of the reason why you can't do that, right? Like, the Hydras are dealing damage. The Lings are running up. You have nothing to tank. You can only split. And with the Banes mixed in there, it's like they're just going to get very good connections on you. So we'll see. We'll see if he just stays on this. Like, I'm, I'm going to be flabbergasted if Clem just continually builds Marine Mine. Maybe those three barracks he's making are going to switch into Marauders or something. I guess we'll see. All right, Mine's coming out. Putting some pressure on, but I mean, you'll see, you'll see that problem again too. If he actually fully engages, you'll see how hard it is to make the just pure marine composition work. Ah, not bad, not bad there. Hive on the way. Two two, you know, we're going up for both sides and everything. Yeah, see that? <laughs> you see how hard this is? See, so if you have Marauders in there, look, he is making Tech Labs, so he's he's going to make Marauders. Uh, but if you have Marauders in there, basically what you do is you leave the Marauders in the front while you micro back the Marines, and the Marauders make it harder for Ling Bane to get around, as well as slow units that are coming through, right? So it, it kind of makes everything get choked up. But as you can see, like, all of his Marine-based engagements have gone to shit. Uh, he's now, he's getting those Tech Labs, so I think we're going to see three Marauders at a time. But we'll see. We'll see one Marauder right now. 
some Liberators coming in. I think that that's going to be more for harassment than anything else. You can see once again, the Marines having a terrible time. And there you go. Three Marauders at a time right now. So I guess Clem's getting sick of all the battles not really going too well. I mean, he's still macroing well. He's still got good bases. And look, he's keeping action on dark side of the map. But that's pretty normal against Ling Bane Hydra anyways. Ling Bane Hydra doesn't leave creep much. It's a very defensive composition overall. You want to get into Hive with it. And I've seen people go Ultra, and I've seen people go uh, Lurker with it. Honestly, I'm a big fan of Ultras right now. Uh, but I, I feel like either way can absolutely be played. I, I've, I've been a big fan of Ultras, honestly, for like eight years or something. It's, I think it's an underrated unit, and it just keeps getting buffs, so... So Adrenal on the way. Another little attack over here from uh, from Clem. Starting to mix in those ghosts as well. Interesting. Ghosts not quite as good at tanking as, as the uh, Marauders are, but obviously they have uh, those other skills that are going to be very useful. Always good to start building up that ghost count. Ooh, good mine. Really good mine. All right, good burrow on burrow there. Burrow coming up here for dark as well. Going to set up some Baneling landmines, no doubt. Oh. Yeah, decides not even to try to micro here against this. Ooh. Nice pullback. I think you're supposed to turn around as dark now. Yeah. Never want to chase quite that far. Pretty decent mine hits. Woo! Dude, the mines. Does Reddit know about this? Guys. Do you see? These mines just keep getting kills. Does Reddit know about this? All right, the load up of drop overlords. I love that Dark is doing this every single game. It's not really working, right? Like we haven't seen great results from these Zergling drops. He's been doing them all day. We've watched a lot of Dark games today, but I love to see it. You know, with the new drop overlords, it's, it seems like a good idea overall. I love that he's trying to utilize it, trying to make it work. Good opportunity for him to learn in a tournament environment about it as well. Hey, kills a Rax. Okay, I mean, that's something. In the meantime, you know, as, as Clem is busy up there, Dark attacking in now with the Lingbane Hydra, dealing a hell of a lot of damage with it as well. Now, Clem actually has a ton of supply. He is certainly not dead. He actually, he's still even fine on SCVs, is the funny thing. Even after 25 die, it's like, yeah, he's still got 60. It's all right. All right, doing some yoinks, trying to punch through here. Clem has a big chunk of army on the left side of the map, and I don't think you're going to be able to kill his main or anything. Tanking quite a bit there with the Marauders. Baneling's getting some decent connections still. The Hydra's dealing a lot of damage out here. Clem may be able to pick off a hatch here. You can see Clem's supply continues to drop. He's lost another 11 workers during that time. More Banes coming up. That is a hell of a lot of Banes. Look at this. This is Dark trying to finish right now. He's saying, screw it. We're all through there with so many Banes, you won't have production facilities left. <laughs> it's a good idea. I like it. Here we go. He's going to punch up. Oh, God. We got to see it. Please. Please. Oh. Well, that was anticlimactic. I was looking forward to him right-clicking the back of the main and seeing what happened. So what are we looking at now? Clem has a lot of upgrades just about to finish, which is nice, right? He's got two mining bases. He's got his main base. It's still there. So that's something, I guess. But look at Dark. He has got a hell of a lot of base. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven base. Obviously not all of them with drones or with minerals right now. 
uh, but he's got a little bit of a bank. His army is still a reasonable size. It's a good fighting size still. I could see Clem getting up here and maybe killing a hatch, but I don't see him doing much more than that. Ooh. Eh. Not as good as I feel like it could have been. Getting ready for another drop there, maybe into the main base. So this hatch, it looks like Dark's going to give that up. I think actually giving that up is a pretty decent play. Oh, this is funny. He's going to get in there at the very last second. That thing was at like two health, man. <laughs> that felt like it was a give up for sure. But he does come up and, and pushes it back. And this is a perfect time because he's trying to drop the main base here of Clem. Dropping massive amounts of lings in the back right of it. Kind of away from those Marines that were in there, maybe even waiting for this drop. Clem bringing all of his forces towards the front, so the Lings are actually dealing huge amounts of damage. Look at this, targeting down some of these reactors, some of these uh, supply dropped depots to try to get that supply block going as well. Really, really heavily annoying stuff. Dark off creep here, gonna go ahead and retreat a little bit towards this hatch. Not feeling very good for Clem, but he's still trying. He's expanded to the top right during all of this. He's re-expanded to his natural. Not that there's a lot there. Units lost is very, very similar. Over 500 lings lost this game. My God. Right, the Banshee finally goes down. We're at 17 minutes in the game. <laughs> it's funny how long they keep these Banshees live, honestly. See the Marauders now doing a little bit of a better job than what we saw previously here, right? In these engagements. Tanking a little bit, slowing a little bit. Finally does get this hatch. I thought previously that Dark was going to just give that up. He fought pretty damn hard for it. And now we're actually at kind of a similar supply. But yeah, I, I, you know, fighting over that hatch, it, it's okay that he lost it for sure. Because he's expanded the bottom left during this. And all the action right now is in that top right-ish area. So, like, those extra bases, if Dark can just suck minerals out of there, that's really bad for Clem. Now, Clem is rotating down here. That drone actually scouts it out. Dark was already kind of moving into the right direction anyways. His creep really allowing him to be all over the map at once. Just instantly answering wherever Clem shows up. Ooh, that mine. <laughs> Interesting uh, liberator position. Gonna lose that pretty quick. Kills about one Hydra. Eh. So many overseers here. His mind's not doing quite as well. Ooh, what a nice fungal. EMP goes off. Does he have enough? Yeah, he has enough for another fun fungal here as well. And starting to kill off some of these medevacs even. Some really excellent EMPs going down, but still enough mana for these parasitic bombs. Oh, I don't know if this base is going to make it. If he right-clicks it, it's gone. Even if he doesn't, it's gone. <laughs> Down goes that planetary in the top right. One of the only saving graces for Clem Clem's position here, I think. It's going to catch a lot more SCVs as well. Clem's economy being destroyed here once again. He's Once again, you know, he's trying to expand into that pocket expansion in front of his main base. Applying some pressure on this bottom left, but look at that. Fungal Hydra. So difficult for Clem to, to keep his cost efficiency where he needs it to be mining this little. Yeah, Liberator will get taken out. Can't quite reach that medevac. Might send a Viper down there later to deal with it. Clem's efficiency just barely over Darks, but of course we've seen him mining more this game. Clem, though, kind of doing his best. Not a bad move right there. Getting those mines out, seeing what he can get done. All right, now can Clem kill this hatch? It looks like Dark is going to give it up. So this is this game is really kind of blowing my mind because it felt at one point like Dark was very close to finishing Clem. 
We're at similar supplies. We have a really massive army from Clem. Look at that, 127 army supply. That's like, that's a maxed army. Even if we're at 180, that's a maxed army, you know? Uh, so that is like a really high quality fighting force from Clem. Now, Dark's creep spread, you know, like for instance, this base is just gone as soon as you attack. He just has to cancel. Uh, but those other two, it's not like they have a lot of creep spread or anything. Oh my God. Ah! <laughs> oh my God. There's so many traps waiting here. Dark just waiting for the perfect opportunity, man. I tell you what. <laughs> I feel like uh, this is something that, you know, Gumiho's in the top four of, of GSL right now as well, right? So I hope he's watching this tonight and he knows if he hits Dark in the finals to just randomly scan anywhere he's walking. These burrow traps that Dark is just consistently setting up. It's, I love to see it, though. You know, the maps are so big. Uh, he's he's doing a great job hitting Baneling landmines all over the place. These infestors set up. Like, these could be game changers. You don't know. Oh, well, that's a good one. He does definitely run into several mines there. Uh, but a very, very decent fungal. Some might say an amazing fungal. Lurker upgrades actually coming up now. Oh, just inside that scan. Another cancel on this base, or a kill this time. More burrow movement and festers. He's, he's just, he's ready for so many different things that could occur. He's setting himself up to have these battles that will completely surprise you. Oh my god. And the double fungal too, to give him the extra second. That was awesome. That was awesome. Dude, Dark is actually playing out of his mind. All day today, he has been playing these magnificent games. Some more great fungals come out. Bane Hydra does have to turn around. Clem's composition looking really good at this point. Setting up to protect that top right with some liberators. You know, Dark's trying to harass during all this. Oh, guns down every Bane before it gets in there. Trying to hit EMPs, but still going to get some parasitic bombs off here. Dude, lots of damage onto these medevacs as well. So, you know, jumping around, we see what those minerals are kind of looking like right now for Dark. Those bottom two left bases, really important. You know, he's trying to retake that 12 o'clock base as well. Of course, that's that's going to be one that's highly contended. Maybe not as valuable as those other ones, but, you know, one that he definitely wants to take. Lurker's being added into this composition now. Look at this, getting up into that main base finally here. Yoinking forward. <laughs> Doesn't really have anything to finish it off, though. But does pull it out of its siege mode. The production of Clem being absolutely destroyed. Now, Clem is trying to do a counterattack here. Kind of hitting one of these mid-bases that doesn't have as much left in it anymore. Now, if he can't hold on to his production... I mean, this is one of the biggest win conditions ever when playing against Terran in StarCraft 1 or 2. You get on top of that Terran production, it's not a lot they can do. I mean, it's it's fun that, you know, when they made StarCraft 25 years ago, they thought, what if the buildings can fly? But realistically, how often do those fly somewhere else, land, and then produce, and you get back into a normal game? It's just not really a thing. So Clem right now, his production is being shot in the foot. It's very tough, right? Like, he he's building a bunch in the top right. That's his furthest base from everything, so it makes a lot of sense, but he's going to have to add a bunch of depots. Especially as he's losing the rest of the ones that were in his main base. Luckily for him, he has a lot of command centers, which are providing a lot of his supply right now. I feel like I'm watching myself play BGH like 25 years ago, using command centers for most of his supply, but that is what's going on. Runs up now and going to just blow up this planetary. So again, that's more supply going down. 
That's another area of defense, another buffering area that's gone. Dark going for the finish. I don't think that Clem has too much of a chance at this point. Now, that being said, Dark doesn't have a big bank, and Dark's bottom left base is, like, that that one that's at, like, I don't know what time that is, like, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, something like that. It's it's getting pretty low, uh, but gets in here, Blinding Cloud going down, blows up this base in a matter of seconds. The Barracks still flying up here. If only they had guns, Terran would be the best race for sure then. Right now, Clem backing up, trying to utilize this uh, planetary to help him defend. Well, you know, I guess one lucky thing is he can start producing units again, but GG is called. Dark is going to take it and bring the score to 2-1. to one. Unbelievable game from both sides.